It sounds like we are playing with words, but we need to push our mindset into definitions of not a life that is a mess up and just flowing around and then it's actually quality life, then it's actually destructive, then it's actually building me, then it's actually bringing death and I don't even know it. It's just this a lot of things. And I come on a Sunday and I go on a Wednesday and I read the word and it doesn't make sense or I get irritated and there's a life in me getting irritated and suddenly when I read the Bible I'm sleepy but I can go and watch the movie and I'm there. And there's a life that is alert. And God created man to sleep. And it's the same of day for you all the way. Oi, oi, oi. Check it up and then you see what life is living. What life is alive in you. Check up your life in this way. Okay? That's that. Number four. Your life is your enemy. It's a time bomb. This life is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Where life connects with life. It's the Holy Spirit testifying my spirit. I'm birthed, reborn by the Spirit of God. My spirit is reborn because it's born from God. Amen. So this life is in my spirit. And in this temple lives life. Life is living. In this temple, life is living. And that is called the Holy Spirit. Or in this temple, another spirit is living. What is the life inside of you? It will be demonic or it will be from God. But it will be a house for one of that spirit. One of that spirits. The Holy Spirit or the demonic spirit. A life that is your enemy. And that life will be either in you or it will be there. Walking there. Because the devil is a roaring lion, seek whom he may devour. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. But walk in his grace, yes, by faith, you're out of that. But when you fall in grace, confess, confess, come in humility, God lifts you up. Amen? But stand in pride, stand in self-justification. What is coming? When you walk in sin, and this destructive force is working in you and give this destructive force called flesh give that life authority then bring, this is bringing death this flesh is bringing death right when the old man we call him the old man we say the old has gone but that's only in your spirit okay so if this flesh is bringing death in me it's calling some oh that's was that good As I could, vultures. No. The vultures. They can see that rotten flesh from that cow far away. I don't know if it's smell. I think it's eyes, eh? If they can. They're going to smell it. They must see it. I don't know. Anybody know? They see it. Okay. And they are just there. And that vultures is their demonic. You walk in the flesh, that you are, attract, you are attracting demonic. To you you are attracting the demonic to walk with you and say oh I can identify with that that lust and in that flesh he's giving place for that lust and that thought patterns but that is the way I think me demon that is my home lust I am lust so I'm at home there don't attract demons because then the life in you is the enemy from hell Oh, you're justifying, criticizing others. Oh, criticizing this and that church like this, this church like that. Oh, that leader like that. Sitting, evaluating. Will you, will you not accept it? Unteachable. Oh, there's this demonic spirit of religion. One of the biggest demonic forces to deceive. And he feels so welcome sitting next to you in church. And you say, you know, I don't know, I don't know about this. These questions. Amen. The devil says to you, sitting next to you, on the church chair. Mm. Be careful. 
who is sitting next to you in church. <laughs> it's not the person next to you. Come on. Yeah, yeah. A demonic force that felt so welcome in the Pharisee. And the Pharisee was so intimate with that life inside of him. And that life inside of the Pharisee killed the living life standing in front of them, Jesus Christ. You allow a life that will kill the life of Christ in you? No man, a house cannot be divided. It's going to fall. Your life is going to fall. It's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. Deal with that. Deal with that. Life is your enemy. Let's leave it there. Point number five. Your life is an offering to God. Romans 12, verse 1. I plead with you. Oh boy. I just note in Afrikaans. That you will present your life as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing unto God. Oh, I'm giving my life as a sacrifice. So I'm going to die on the altar. No. A living sacrifice. A sacrifice that is living. Hello? So if you're giving yourself unto God. First of all, you are crucified with Christ and you give all your flesh to the Lord and then you want to die as an offering. That's freaky. That's not biblical. So don't give all your flesh to God. Okay? Give it in on the cross of Christ and see how it's there. Deal with it in that way. Where did you see in the word? Give me all your sin. I don't see that. If you have a scripture, doctor, just let me know. Um, I don't see that. Okay. How? And then we confess, Lord, please take this and take this. And the Lord doesn't want to have it. He doesn't want to have it. No? Okay. That's what's done. So a sacrifice, we can... We said we must deny ourselves in that what is wrong. But there's self-denial, there's self-destruction. And self-destruction gets into the place where there's a life in me that I offer up unto Him. It's a living sacrifice. I'm living that sacrificial lifestyle. Through my life that is living, what I'm living is not for myself. There's life in me. It says, everything to you, Lord. And then after that, I'm still alive. A living sacrifice. Amen? And that is pleasing unto Him. That is Christ saying, I didn't come for you to serve me, but for me to serve. He gave his life as a sacrifice in serving people. Don't serve as a curse. Serve because you are honored to serve. Amen. Abram sacrificed Isaac, but he got it. He said, even if God were raising from the dead, this is a living sacrifice from his heart. The sacrifice was not first of all Isaac. Hello. That was the object of sacrifice. The living sacrifice was Abram. Are we awake? Are you the Abram? The living sacrifice. That you will give up everything. And God says, stop. Now I know that you love me and will withhold nothing from me. Now I see the level of your sacrifice. Amen. <coughs> Okay, Moses, Exodus 33, 32, verse 32. Exodus 32, verse 32, where Israel messed up with a golden calf. And uh, first of all, Moses went up and reminded God about the vision. You remember we talked about that. And he did intercession. God, but this is your promises, and this is what you promised us. And Canaan, you promised it to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is what you promised Please don't kill the people. Uh, we stand on the promises of God. Some of us pray like that, yes. Then he go down and he saw the mess up really what happened and now he goes up again. The intercession didn't work the first time. Why? I don't know. Second time, he gave himself a living sacrifice. And not just reminding God about the vision.
You can walk by faith with your vision, with what you want to do. But if the life is not here, you will build your own kingdom because it will be a life that is not from God that will be living in your vision. But if you have the right life, yes, you come to God. Moses, God, please forgive them. But if not, take my name out of the book of life, Moses said. Whoa, that is quite a living sacrifice. That is quite a living sacrifice. Take my name out of the book of life if you don't forgive them. But for the sake of forgiveness, I present myself as a living sacrifice to you for whatever you want to do with me. Hallelujah. John 15 verse 13 says, No greater love is there than laying down your life for your friends. No greater love is there among us if you can give yourself your time, your energy, your money, your skill, your, your wisdom, what you have to a brother and a sister around you. No greater love. And that is a life that is an offering unto Him. Do whatever you do as if unto the Lord. In, in your doing, that life of doing is life as an offering. Okay. That is the life that is in you. Point number... That was five. Point number six. Sorry, can I have a, one point under five? Love them as you love your own life. Remember what we said? There's a life that you need to cherish. There's a life that you need to love. Because in this life, it looks like God. The life inside here in your spirit looks like God. So be in love with the Christ inside of your spirit. Be in love with the Christ, the gold that God has placed in your spirit. And if you can stand that, and if you understand that, you will be loving people in the right way. You will not love them because they have the same lust. Many people, they love one another out there. And because of that love, there's abortion. Hello? Because they're connecting in a love that is not from God, that is destructive. But there's a life that you can connect with in one another. That is awesome. That is awesome. Okay? As you offer yourself up to one another. Your life as a testimony. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 16. Talking about we as the aroma of Christ. We are the sweet fragrance of Christ. Unto those who accept it, we are the sweet fragrance for them from life to life. And for those who don't accept what you have from death to death. What does that mean? When you are living this awesome life, that you have the sweet fragrance of the life that is from God. From God who is that life. If I live with that life through me, it is a sweet fragrance. Above all the thing that can, or everything that is still alive. Through all that things, there's something that smells fresh. It's a fresh life. And when somebody is in the same frequency, if somebody is in Christ and they want to accept more of that, hello, they become more alive. You are hungry for God and somebody sharing about God, wow, you're just more alive. You walk out with more life when you walk out here. More life when you spoke to a brother and a sister, when you went to cell group, when you testify. Ah, there's more of his life in you. It's there. Your life is a testimony. You're an aroma. But those who don't accept it, they have death in them. But may they make a choice not to accept life and that brings them into more death. When you give somebody a, a, uh, a choice, you address somebody on the street. They're walking in sin. They're not doing what they're supposed to do. And you ask them, don't you want to walk with Christ? They say, no. You are bringing more death in them. Because in that moment of decision, they made a decision to resist life. And the aroma of your life is bringing more death in them. Because you give them that authority. Are you with me? So your life will impact people. Make sure that it's in God's way. That you come with His godly love and His wisdom also. 
Good. Your life has a testimony. That was number six. Number seven. Your life is in an eternal, unending destiny. Romans 14 verse 11 says, As I live, says the Lord. Romans 14, 11. It says, As I live, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess that I am God. What is he talking about? God is saying, every living creature, everything that is alive, everything that is called life, will bow to me as the life. Who will bow to him? A anything that is dead? No, 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 no. Every life will bow. And that life that is like me, and confessing it from on earth, when they lived on earth, we will be united. And the life that is not like me, not in my likeness, not in my image, will be thrown in the lake of fire. And that life that is called death will live there for eternity. Or that life will have an awesome destiny with the life giver, God himself. Amen. Give definition to your life. Ask the Holy Spirit tonight, this week, Lord, what type of life am I living? Revelation 22, 17, And the Spirit and the Bride says, Come, and let him who hears says, Come. Everyone that thirsts, come. Everyone who desires, come and drink the water of life. That is even the last altar call in the Bible. Drink the water of life. Revelation 2015, those whose name wasn't found in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. Just take five seconds, no, 30 seconds. The band can come. Just close your eyes and think about your life. Just close your eyes. And for, just for focus sake, and think about your life. See yourself as you see you in the mirror. See yourself as you would see you in, in the mirror. Just focus, just focus. I really believe, just focus. Just close your eyes, please. And just focus. Can you see yourself? What type of life are you living? Holy Spirit, show us. Show us. Show us. Show us the life that we must put in the corner. The life that we must give center stage. The life that we must embrace. The life that is an opportunity. The life that is from you. Show us, Lord. The life that we will not allow near us. That only the Holy Spirit will be the life in us. We will not have fellowship with demons. We choose that life. Thank you that you give us the authority, that you give us the right to exist. That God, may our existence not be our downfall. May our existence bring forth the dream of life that you had in your heart when you thought about us, when you thought about me, Lord, each one of us, when you thought about me, let my existence be for your glory. Why you created me? Why do I exist, Lord? Show me, please. Your words are life and spirit. I need your word. I need your words in my life. To understand the life that I'm supposed to live. I surrender to you my life in such a way, God. I thank you for that. Open it up for us, Lord. Open it up for me. Open it up. 